Last time on Meat Eater, I began a hunt with first timers Joe Rogan and Brian Callen. I think we're the first comedian hunters on TV. I think you're right. Joe tagged out, but Brian is still looking for a clean, clear shot. You see him? Yeah, I got him, I got him, I got him. Okay, that's, that's a no shot. I almost had him. Brian's determined to be successful, and we're gonna see this job through and then cap this experience off with an old school outdoor feast. Oh, man. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. It's late October, and I'm chasing mule deer with comedian and first-time hunter Joe Rogan. We're in the heart of North Central Montana's Missouri Breaks country, one of my all-time favorite places to hunt. Tonight, Joe bagged his first buck, and he and I are headed back to camp. Hey, Brian Callen. How'd you guys, how'd you guys do? We got a, an eight-point buck from 200 yards out. No. Yes. No, <laughs> yes. no really? Yeah. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah. Joining us is Joe's best friend, actor and comedian Brian Callen, who's been hunting under the mentorship of my buddy, Ryan Callahan. We launched on the Missouri River a couple days ago and drifted about 20 miles downstream to some prime hunting areas. After two full days of hiking and glassing and a couple of missed opportunities, Joe and I found a dandy buck and he made the kill. So we put the bullet in, we, we line it up, and I'm too close to the scope. Damn it, I had him. But then I pulled back and then I saw it clear. I calmed myself down. I, I, like, I had a couple of seconds where I was like, gah, gah, gah. no, 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 no. And I had to calm myself down. I took a big deep breath and boom, and he just fell right over. It was amazing. I had one in my crosshairs and it was so perfect. And then it just, boom, it just went up. And then we just we couldn't saw find bundles it. of deer tonight. Oh, really? We have the does. We couldn't 25. shoot any. 25 deer? Year one was better than our 25. Woo. Yeah. Good Thanks, Good sir. job. I'm glad you got it. It's pretty intense, man. Joe got his buck late in the day, so we put it up in a juniper tree for the night with plans to retrieve it in the morning. For dinner, we brought back the liver, one of my favorite camp meals. So Joe, do you typically like beef liver? Yeah, I order liver and onions all the time at restaurants. Oh, really? Okay. I even you, cook you it at home. You to that degree. Yeah, I love it. It's one of my favorite things to eat. Lay a layer of liver in there. Flat, yeah, there you go. Grab that seasoning salt out of there. All right, Joe, you want to try a piece of liver? Hell yeah. Um, here's a sport. Wow, that's delicious. That is good. You like it? Oh, it's delicious. There's something really satisfying about eating something that you just killed. Mm hmm That is pretty good liver, man. Mm. That's delicious. Oh, my god. OK, so tomorrow, we're going to go get our deer, skin it, butcher it. And you boys are going to go out and get either a buck or a doe. I'm going to get whatever I can get a shot on. Joe's cracked me up this morning. Yeah, <laughs> the first thing Joe said when he woke up is he goes, camping below. <laughs> if you're thinking about doing this, don't plan on being comfortable. See, work city slickers. I'm used to hotels. <laughs> so I basically, I, I keep like sleeping a little, then I wake up and I'm like, oh man, I'm cold. And I just can't get warm. But you know, listen, you think that's going to stop me? I'm getting a deer today.
hold up in class. Just got a glass, you know, the whole area. Don't want to have one spook that we didn't see and blow the whole deal out. We have to get to this little hump um, right here. Down, 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 down. Let's get ready to shoot. Are you still cool with taking a doe? Okay, here she comes. Moving. Okay, so now just watch her with your naked eye. Where'd she go? Oh, there she is. There you are, sweetie. Okay, now get really comfortable, finger straighten off the trigger. When you calm, 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 calm. Comfortable, finger straighten off the trigger. Calm, 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 calm. Where'd she go? You punched her straight through the lungs there, buddy. Did I? Yep. Good shot. Excellent shot. Wow. I didn't see it. I didn't see it fall even. I just saw a blast. Oh, it's a great doe too. It's a mature doe. All right, man. Mission accomplished. I was so worried I wasn't gonna get a, a deer. And Joe would never let me live it down. Beautiful animals. There you go. Go ahead and cut this all the way up the brisket. Excellent. I'll probably see a little expansion. So now you may want to roll your sleeves up. Look at that, right through there. There she is. And you've got the bird food. Okay there, buddy. We done? Nicely done. Thanks, Good brother. job. Thanks, brother. I'm really learning why human beings decided to plant food. Because when you have to catch food, if you don't have a high-powered rifle, I can't imagine being really hungry out here with bow and arrow having to feed my children. It's just humbling. I'm, I'm humbled and I'm excited. And it's been a really great experience. They're dragging. They're dragging a deer? Let's go walk to them. Yeah, let's go find out. He must have killed it with a knife. I never even heard a shot. <laughs> He's got one. Oh, you do got one. Nice, man. One shot, baby, one shot. You got a doe? Yeah. We never even heard you shoot. We just saw him and I had to take it. Oh, I couldn't great. wait for a buck. I was like, no, 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 I gotta get this thing. Good work, man, first deer. Congratulations, brother. <laughs> it's a successful hunt. Do we go home a day early now and sleep in a bed? No. <laughs> <laughs> so both guys managed to tag out, which is the best thing we could have hoped for. So now we can have a big venison feed without feeling lazy for not being out there hunting. While Ryan hangs back to butcher Callan's deer, the three of us head out to retrieve Joe's buck. Wow, dude, that's a big buck. Oh man. Right here? Yep. Cut through the hide around each knee, okay. then come in here to here. Okay. Here to here. Okay. Just through the hide. Don't monkey around here. Don't put your hands on that. Don't put the knife on that. Why? It's a tarsal gland. Smell that. It's nasty. Oh,
We can eat some of this deer meat raw, can't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. It doesn't hurt you. Let me get some right now. <laughs> oh, there we go. It's old school. It's the oldest school. <laughs> Is this a real experience, Brian? I'm eating fat by a campfire. It's tallow, nice. brother. Tallow. Hey, you gotta get the terms. Guess what? Tallow sucks. <laughs> tallow is not good. You're not a big tallow fan? No. It's not, no. <laughs> hey, anybody have a candle I can eat? Whoa. That's legit. The first time you do something, everything can be a surprise. But one can usually find similarities that will help bridge the gaps between the known and the strange. You want to eat something weird? Fat from behind these eyes. Yeah? It tastes like bread, though. You mean like raw? Or? Yeah, just eat it right yeah. out of there. Watch, check it out. It's all you, pal. Grab that, Brian. Right, right there. It tastes like raw bread. Isn't that crazy? Oh, my god. Yeah, it's like eating dough. That's so weird. Mm -hmm. We're nearly finished, but there are a few more steps until we are ready to start cooking. Now, all we gotta do is cut these legs off. Oh, come on, man. This show's not called Butcher. It's called Meat Eater. <laughs> Joe and Brian and I have finished butchering Joe's buck. So we pack it up and begin to make our way back to camp for the feast. In the meantime, Ryan has brought the dough back to camp to skin it and get it ready for a preparation that I've wanted to try for a long time now. Steve wants to try this recipe of a roasted deer head. So I'm gonna caper out completely, cape the skull, and we're gonna bury it in the ground and roast it. So I'm looking forward to that. My inspiration for this meal comes from A.B. Guthrie's classic mountain man novel, Big Sky. The book depicts it as standard table fare among the men who once used this river as a thoroughfare to reach the beaver trapping grounds of the northern Rockies. All right. It looks like it's ready to roast to me. So you're gonna bury it in there? Where our beloved campfire is? Well, your campfire is gonna, it won't cease to exist. It's just gonna be like. Underneath it? It's crazy. This is madness. And you're cooking the head, right? Yep. In addition to the head, we're gonna cook the neck in the same way. For all the steps, cooking the head is really kind of simple. Dig a hole, insulate the head with a few layers of foil and wet cotton, and then bury it, hoping for the best. In my mind, it's a great meal for this crew, a meal that demonstrates the wealth of things that can be done with venison if you have an adventurous palate. OK, we should check what time it is. So if it doesn't work, we'll know how long not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think three hours ought to cook that right up good. Do you guys mind burying potatoes in that fire? I can do that. Wrap them in foil and then bury them? Yeah, wrap them up and bury them under the fire. And then I'm gonna go get a loin. You're gonna cut up garlic, onion, apple, and a heart. Let's do these squashes too. Just cut them in half, gut them, and wrap them in foil. We're gonna have a whole like smorgasbord buried under that fire. Something will be, something will cook right. Cap it like a pear. Yep. It's 
so wild. Yeah, fill that in, and then we'll just kind of form it back together. Brian, throw some small sticks on this fire. Exercising proper lifting technique, bubbling the ass, back is straight. Here we are. When you uh, pick up sticks, do you have a technique that you use? Yes, I do. So here I am here. Here it is again, bubbling the ass here. We're laying it down here. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to power up through the heels and bang right there. There's no stress in my back. We've got about a dozen things roasting in our fire, but we're not done yet. The final piece of this meal, grilled loin. You're talking about like that thick? A little thicker. That. Smack down to half that size. It's a smack down. Wow, that's tender, man. That looks good. You know, you look to the inside. Well, they're sitting there. That's how many we have, right? Five? That's our neck. Yes. So the head's gonna be red right about there. Yeah. Oh, you hear it? Oh, I like that. Put that over to the side. Crackling, huh? Sizzling. Is that the head? Yes, sir. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. Fine dining. There she is. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You gotta have faith for a couple more minutes. Just grab that, some of that. I'm telling you. Wow. Wow. Do your jowls. That's delicious. Oh, that's like smoked pork. Yeah, it tastes a lot like pulled pork. That's awesome. You know, I honestly wasn't behind you on this one. <laughs> But this was really good. Oh man, Dude, you gotta try this. Holy, shit, this is good. It's 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 as good yeah, as it gets. It's, it's as good as it gets. It's almost silly how good that one is. That's good. Here's your tongue. I'm gonna cut these up for people. Where's our heart? Here's a ticker. Oh yeah, we're loving. Whoa. That's gonna be the best part right there. Cut some of that up, man. Oh my God, the neck, where's the neck? Ooh, you know what, this is gonna be really good. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's about perfect. From the hunting to the food, everything worked out perfectly. I'm relieved and relaxed. This will easily go down as one of my favorite trips of all time and one of my favorite places of all time. I always tell people that I don't have memories of my first hunt, that I was going out with my dad and brothers long before I can recall. But thankfully, I'm able to live out those first hunt emotions vicariously through the people I take out on their first ventures. For me, it's a way of recovering that personal sense of raw wonder that I've lost to the passage of time. I'll tell you, I don't do anything new. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I do new versions of the same thing, but I do the basically the same thing all the time. Like, I like to go hunting. I don't put my neck out that often. And I gotta hand it to you guys to come out and just not only go out and do something totally new, 
but to go and do what would many people would regard as like a, a fairly involved version of a new thing. It's ballsy to do that. I got to hand it to you guys. Thanks, man. Well, thanks, thanks for bringing us. What was the moment that you threw all the cold and wet and wind? Did you guys know that you're coming back, that you're going to do it again? Right away, as soon as the deer dropped. Really? There's so much anticipation there and so much joy, and it was so primal. I was like, I'm, I'm doing this forever. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. No doubt. I enjoy these first time hunts for another reason as well. I love to see people push their limits to explore the unknown and try new things, things that might be tough or uncomfortable or emotionally taxing. After all, where would we be if it weren't for exploration, if it weren't for our desire to experience the new? That eternal quest, after all, is at the heart of being human.